What's up you guys? That's right, today I am thrashing the Ruger American and talking about all of the problems with it. But before <laughs> this video is lit up with negative comments, I want to talk about why I love the Ruger American. I mean, it's got a hammer forged barrel, it's lightweight, it's cheap as dirt, it's got a good recoil pad. There's a lot to like here for the price point that it is. The reason I wanted to do this video though is because often when I review more expensive rifles, the comments are just, why would you buy this? Just get a Ruger American. And I think some of the people don't appreciate the differences and the problems that you're just not quite fixing at this price point. So today, the problems with the Ruger American. A little bit later, I'm gonna tell you about this Mamba Mag from MDT. So let's go first to the thing that is difficult for me to even talk about with my son. So I have a 13 year old, his name is Ruger, and he used this exact rifle on his very first deer hunt. I'll show you some of the clip here of what happened. So a decent little buck comes out, Ruger gets set up, we're getting all excited in the little box blind, this is in Texas. He goes to take off the safety and listen to this. Yep, that loud, nasty click is the safety going off. It was loud enough that about 35 yards away, this deer immediately hears it look up and it threw him off enough that he wasn't able to get off a shot before that deer ran out of there. So it's not a big deal. It's just a safety, but it is very clicky. There's kind of no way to do it quiet. Maybe if you really put two fingers on it and kind of slow it up. But a lot of people, the way they hunt is they're gonna hunt on safety and then they'll flip off the safety. So it actually can be significant when you're hunting pretty easily solved, just kind of use two fingers and slowly move it up. It's not that big of a deal, but it did cost us a white tail. Number two, this is an accuracy thing. It's not very well free floated though. Often because of the just polymer stock here, it you know it may the design be perfect to fit in the barrel, but like this one, the plastic is just kind of warped over enough that the stock is pretty much always contacting the barrel. And a lot of times you'll see that on kind of a polymer stock. But there is enough flex up in the front that pretty much always, if you're shooting on a bipod, there's enough pressure, especially if you're kind of leaning into that bipod, that the stock is going to contact the barrel. So I have found the Ruger American to be a very accurate rifle, especially for its price point, but you can see some unexpected flyers and things when that happens. So I do wish we had a little bit stiffer of a fore, fore end and a little bit more generous of a free float. Number three, I would consider the feeding reliability of the Ruger American to be about 90%. Usually it's going to work fine. And in some specific cartridges, you may get it to work 100 to 100% of the time. And so I'm sure a lot of you will comment and say, oh, I've never had feeding problems with my Ruger American. I totally get it. But there are a lot of different variations of the Ruger American, a lot of different cartridges. And all you have to do is search on YouTube for Ruger American feeding problems and you'll see a long list of videos. It feeds most of the time, but not every time. And in fact, that exact situation with my son Ruger, he tried to take the shot, the deer kind of move, moved away, and then he took a Hail Mary and I was like, no, 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 don't, don't shoot when the deer's running away. But then he tried to chamber another round and couldn't, the magazine was just kind of blocking the bolt. He couldn't get a second round in. I would consider the Achilles heel of the Ruger American to be this guy, this magazine. Some of them have a straight magazine, others come with the rotary mag, and I do tend to see more problems with this rotary mag style on the Ruger American in some cartridges. By the way, this is a little bit of an aside from this video, but I wanted to show you something cool from MDT. This is called Mambo Mag. You've heard of Mambo number five, this is Mamba number 10, because what you do with this is they come for Remington 700 pattern, so you know, your uh, Bagara B14, that's gonna work as well. 
It works with Tika T3X, works with Remington 7083 and 7600. So these are, oh, look at that thing, that's sweet. So this is a straight 10 round, incredibly solid magazine that you can put in. So this is my Tika T3X super light. Take out the magazine, put it in backwards. Mamba Mag goes right in, and now on this 6.5 Creedmoor, I have a 10 round magazine. And you can even get the bottom metal, like on a Remington 700, they have it for Howell 1500, so that you can convert if you have you know, a hinged floor plate on one of those rifles, you can get the bottom metal, and then you're good to use the magazine. It's a really big upgrade, especially if you're taking a rifle that you know you could use hunting for sure, but especially I think at the range is so helpful to me when I don't have to constantly be reloading. I'm also excited about using it on some rifles I have that just aren't super reliable, have kind of really cheapy magazines. This one is just super high quality, and so I really like it. This is Mamba Mag from MDT. Give it a look. Number four. So if you're buying an inexpensive rifle, it's nice to have the ability to kind of build on it over time and kind of replace something that could improve your rifle over time as you kind of save up a little bit of money, right? Well, the Ruger American is not a Remington 700 pattern. They're using kind of their own action here. This is a three lug bolt instead of you know a two lug bolt like you might see on the Remington 700, which is nice. It gives you a short 70 degree bolt throw instead of the 90. There are advantages to it. I like that it has that uh, shroud on the bolt, even though it's just kind of chintzy plastic. And so there's a lot to like about this action, but I would consider the value in this rifle to be right here in the barrel. They're giving you a cold hammer forged barrel in a very inexpensive rifle, and that's why they're pretty accurate, Ruger Americans. Um, and so I would consider it to be less value in the action. And usually if there's a rifle you're wanting to invest in improving over time, you want the value to be in the action because you can build everything else kind of around it. Okay, the, the next one I get is very petty. I mention it because I think there are enough people on this channel and we get enough views for uh, rifle reviews that if we start talking about some things, we might get the industry to start finally catching on. And you guys know I hate sling studs. They are the bane of my existence. Who designed this? Seriously, it's a terrible design to have a sling stud here and here. I know it's on every rifle and I totally get that, but it's a terrible design. We have QD flush cups now that are uh, you know, just a circle inset that you can just clip your sling right inside it. And so when you're riding the bag, when you're shooting, with this sling stud protruding out, when you're shooting during a recoil, boom, it's kind of moving the rifle around. That's a terrible idea for accuracy. Plus, it means when you put a sling on, like this is on your back, well, this is what's hitting your back. These sharp points, that's a terrible idea. A much better idea would have cutie flush cuts, cush, flush cups there and there because then everything's flat against your back and not digging into you all day. I would just love to see some cutie flush cups taking off on more of these inexpensive rifles. It can't cost more than a nickel to switch from a sling stud to a cutie flush cup mount and I think it's just a better mounting system. Next up is the trigger. Now, I would not consider this to be a bad trigger. I have confirmed that we're empty here. It's kind of this bladed style, but when you are pulling the trigger, there is very noticeable creep. I mean, nobody's gonna be under any illusions that this shoots like an expensive trigger. It's not, it's a very inexpensive trigger. You definitely get used to the way it goes. It feels very repeatable in the creep. Uh, some of them are very <laughs> as you're pulling the trigger, and this one is just squishy. It's, it doesn't feel grainy and lots of stops. It's just one long, big squish uh, to the wall. And so it's not a horrible trigger. You're gonna do just fine with it, but if you wanted to use this for more precision rifle, it's not the best. You're about from three to five pounds, so it's not super light either. There are many replacements you can pick. 
but just know you're going to get a higher quality trigger if you were to step up a little bit in gun. Next up is the stock. Now there is a version of the Ruger American that comes with a Magpul Hunter stock. That's pretty cool, adds a little bit of weight. And I do like that this very sleek stock does cut down a lot on the weight. This is a very lightweight rifle, but it sounds like a woodpecker. I mean, it just, it just doesn't feel nice. I mean, the fact that it's hollow and it sounds like that, what does it really matter? You know, it's just something you notice. Nobody's gonna be under illusions that this is an expensive stock either. There are those issues, like I mentioned at the front, the end that can cause some accuracy stuff. We have a plastic trigger guard. I've seen a few reports of that getting smashed during hunts. And the attachment point of the magazine to the stock, because it's all plastic, that's what's causing some of those feeding issues as well. Also, because it is so sleek, the cheek piece is very low down from the line of the bore, and so you're rarely going to get a cheek weld while you're shooting on a, on a stock like this. But I am glad that they put a good quality uh, butt pad on there. Actually, there are a lot of rifles that are more expensive that I think this is a better butt pad um, than that on it. So it's an inexpensive stock. It's all rounded at the front, so you're not going to get you know, a great purchase on a bag, something that's gonna keep you steady when you're shooting, but it's not bad either. Overall, the Ruger American is still probably the best, very, very cheap rifle out there, but it's not perfect. And so in this video, hopefully I was able to address some of the things that make this a cheap rifle so that you can choose if you wanna step up or not.